What's going on everybody? My name is Keith Gebhardt with LearnTechTraining.com and today, today we are going to talk about how to set up an SMTP server within Cisco Packet Tracer so you could add more technologies to your CCNA level studies and all the different lab topologies that you're creating to see other versions or various types of traffic flowing through your network. And at the end of this course, we'll also show you a little bit on how to actually capture these packets so you can see the SMTP traffic flowing through the network. And that will benefit any of you that do not know already how to capture packets within Cisco Packet Tracer. Also, as a reminder, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button, okay? We want you guys to follow us. That way, when we upload a new video to you, you are notified. There's also a little bell looking icon that you should probably select on that too. Then you'll get a little push notification on your mobile devices. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need you to do is open up a blank Cisco Packet Tracer lab, as you can see here I do have. And all I'm gonna do is grab a 2960 switch, a couple computers, it does not matter if it's a desktop, it does not matter if it's a laptop, and a server, because obviously we need a SMTP server to be able to forward and receive this email that we are trying to access. Now, for building labs, it's always a good practice to try to, as neatly as possible, not only build your lab, but um, document it as well as you move forward. That way you could go back and forth with, to referencing it without needing to actually drill into a whole bunch of different menus and uh, navigate all over the different topology devices you have implemented. It just helps make your life a little bit easier. Remember, being neat in networking is key to success, especially when you gotta go back and try to troubleshoot something, you're not digging around and you get fed up and you just close it out. You should not be doing that. 90% of your Cisco CCNA, by the way, will be troubleshooting, right? You're not gonna be doing a whole bunch of configurations. A lot of it's gonna be using show commands and being able to read the output on your screen to determine what's going on. So just a little FYI for your exam takers. But for now, let's go ahead and start naming these. I'm just gonna name this guy the IP address I'm gonna use, 172.16.4. Let's say he's 10, we'll, you know, we'll just keep it standard. And I'm gonna name him admin, okay? And as you can see there, it didn't really put a space there, that's okay. And then here we're gonna do 172.16.4.20 and space, and he's gonna be staff just so we could go back and reference it a little bit easier. And then our server is gonna be 172.16.4.30, and this will be SMTP, obviously, it's our only server. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually run some cables to our switch. Now, we are not configuring different VLANs and things of that nature. If you wanna know more about VLANs and inter VLAN routing, native VLANs, and all that great stuff, I have a great video I'll link somewhere up here on the top, so you can click that and check it out as you wish. But for now, any port on a Cisco switch will work because all of them by default are in one VLAN. Again, that's one broadcast domain. I could take a switch, hang on here. I could actually take this massive switch here, right? This is a nice 48 port Cisco switch. I could plug any device into this that I want right out of the box. You rip the box open, you smell it. <laughs> right now I might be nerding out here but right out of the box, it's going to work because everything on the switch is by default gonna be in that one VLAN. So it doesn't matter if I'm plugged into port one or three or 10 over here or, or 36 or 40, two, 48, all the way at this end, they will still communicate, okay? That's one thing to remember about Cisco switches, that it's not until you start creating VLANs and separating those broadcast domains where you really have the issue. So let's go ahead and continue with uh, plugging these cables in. We're gonna plug them into the switch again. It just does not matter. You know, We're not doing any switch configurations for this example. This will set you up so you can now take how to configure an SMTP server and go back, watch some of the other videos that I told you about, like the uh, VLANs and trunks one, and then try to set up the SMTP server on other networks so you can see the cross communication, not only just from a local area network as far as like a layer two environment, which we have here, but through a WAN network or through a layer three type network. So the next thing we need to do is actually configure the NICs on these computers. And the reason why we gotta do this is because down here we just named them. That's just more or less a visual reference. So here we're just gonna type it in, and this is just like configuring your NICs on your actual computers, right? That's all that is. Now we do not need to worry about a gateway because we're not routing. So just an IP address and a subnet mask and bada bing, bada boom, we're good to go. We're gonna go over to the staff computer here, desktop IP configuration, and he's gonna be 172.16.4.20 and 255255 for the subnet mask. And the SMTP server will go to 
this guy, 172.16.4.30. Tab that out and bada bing, bada boom. Now we can just click the X here. Now what we need to do is actually go to services, down to email, and set a domain name. I'm gonna go ahead and use learntechtraining.com and you just hit set. Now this domain name, don't forget, is hypothetical. It's virtual, it doesn't exist. So you could create it whatever you want. You could use dell.com, you could use walmart.com, you could use I really don't care about this video.com or I'm loving this video.com, right? It just does not matter, it's virtual. So the next thing you need to do is set up a couple usernames, accounts for this email to be able to pull from. So it could say, hey, I could use this email to send and receive emails. That's basically what we're doing. Here we're just gonna say admin and the password will be Cisco just to keep things simple. And for our second user, we could just say staff and the password will again be Cisco. Again, as simple as you can make your labs, that way as you move forward, you can put more difficult concepts into practice, the easier it's going to be for you. So now we could go ahead and close him out. One other thing that's a good FYI tip is to test your net con network connectivity as you go. And the reason for this is if you're starting at A, to go into B, go into C, go into D, so you have A, B, C, D, right? And all of a sudden, you get all the way to D and something's not working. Well, where in this process of different configurations you are making did you go wrong? So when you go from A to B, give it a quick test. When you go to B to C, give it a quick test. That way you could eliminate the amount of different things that you implemented that could have gone wrong and you gotta do that much more troubleshooting. So just as a quick little test here, I could go to my command prompt, I could say ping, and just ping the uh, SMTP server, 172.16.4.30. And without any issue, we have communication. So on this admin computer, we need to go down here to email. And the first name, well, we could just name him admin. Email address will be admin at, well, what do you think? What was the domain name that we set? It was learntechtraining.com. Incoming mail server. Since we don't have a DNS server set up where we could usually just use the domain for it because DNS resolves an IP address to a naming system, right? Our domain names. So since we don't have that set up, we just need to use the IP address. Remember, we never really communicate through a network based on a host name, even a domain name. That means nothing in networking. That domain name is gonna translate using DNS, or rather DNS is gonna translate that name to an IP address. All network communication happens through the IP address. So because of that, we could still use this actual IP address and it will work. And our outgoing um, mail server address is the same as well. Now the username, again, will just be admin and the Cisco password that we gave it before. Save that. Let's go ahead and go into our staff computer here. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. This time he's gonna be staff. Email address will be staff at learntechtraining.com. Uh, and then incoming servers will be 172.16.4.30. And outgoing is 172.16.4.30. Username is staff and password yet again is Cisco. Let's go ahead and save that. We could close these windows out. I could click any of the computers. We're gonna go ahead and compose, okay? And since I'm on the admin computer, I'm gonna send it to the staff computer. So we can say staff at learntechtraining.com. Subject, I'm loving this SMTP video. And for the subject or the body of the email, we could say, please do not forget to subscribe to Learn Tech Training on YouTube, all right? Awesome stuff. See what I did there? Kind of cross-promoting. <laughs> Just kidding. But please do subscribe. I want you guys to subscribe. That way you could learn. I could teach, right? Hit send. Let's go ahead and close this out. Let's go to our staff computer. Let's go to the email option down here. Click the receive icon and bada bing and bada boom. Please do not forget to subscribe to Learn Tech Training on YouTube. That is the body. That is the message that we just sent from the other computer. We could even take it a step further. Let's go ahead and click reply and i will be sure to subscribe keith cool so now we could hit send let's go back to our admin computer let's go ahead and click email click receive and there it is and you can see our original message and you can see our new bodied message that we replied to so that is a very very simple way to actually set up an smtp server since i have a couple more minutes here i did say i would like to show you guys how to capture that smtp packet going through the network so to do this, it's very simple. 
Follow my mouse down here to the right hand corner of your screen. Click the stop watch like an icon. Go back to one of your computers. It does not matter which one. Click email, click compose. We're gonna go back to staff at learntechtraining.com. We could say this is to see captures, right? And again, uh, do not forget to subscribe. You can put anything in here you want. I'm just doing this to be goofy. But click send. Now you can see it's generating a little packet here. I could go ahead and close this out. We're gonna just move this up, auto capture. Ooh, did it go? Nope, I missed it, I'm sorry. Let's do that again. We're gonna com um, compose. Let's try that one more time. Staff at learntechtraining.com. Subject, testing, testing. Hit send. Now we just click here, auto capture. And you're gonna watch our packet go all the way to the SMTP server back. Now right here, it's doing the three-way TCP handshake, right? Then when it receives the SMTP packet, it's gonna go back forward. Now the cool thing about this is we can go up here and click one of these frames and look at this, it's giving us all the information from our source to destination MAC address. If we go up another layer, we can see our source and destination IP addresses, right? A source being where we sent it from, etc. And then here we can see which protocol or which application service we are using as the SMTP. Also one thing to be aware of is there's a couple different types of email protocols. We have SMTP, we have POP3, we have IMAP. They're all used for different scenarios, whereas SMTP is becoming the most popular. You're gonna see that a lot more out there over many of the others. Sometimes if you have local servers around, say um, internet service hostings for different websites, you might see some POP3. Your cell phones could utilize POP3. You'll notice in Packet Tracer, it gives you the option for POP3. But really, when you're configuring an Exchange server to an, a server that's utilizing POP3, it's going to be a little bit different. But in Packet Tracer, it's very simple. You know, Don't take this as an ends all be all. Now I'm an email expert. This is more or less for you guys to start including different technologies within your Cisco CCNA lab studies. Again, a lot of it to deal with. Watch these packets go through the network. See how communication is happening view the ports, obviously we see our uh, standard port for SMTP is indeed 25. You will need to know that for your exam and POP3 is going to use a uh, port 110. So things that you need to understand and know for your, taking your CCNA. All right guys, so I hope you found this um, helpful. <laughs> Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave any comments if you have any questions. Follow us on Facebook and I will see you guys later. Thank you.